Are we going to turn us on on the stream or? Oh, there we are. Boy, let's see how this one goes. Emergency sub, Nikolai, don't tell the boys, jungling for DD. Okay. He's going to pull out some uh, some fresh Amumu. I don't actually know if he's played Amumu or recently. Probably more recently than I have, but let's do a quick op.gg search and see how, uh, how his Amumu play has looked recently, if it exists. Played a lot of... Uh, as expected, he's played his mid lane picks. Let's go back a few seasons. I am not seeing any Amumu play. So, everybody is here. We will have to see how this one pans out. This be a, uh, a big upset if uh, DD is able to turn it around anyway. I think this week on Bubble Tea Time, all analysts but one voted for second breakfast. So, if DD is able to pull out an upset win with an emergency sub who's normally a mid laner playing jungle. This will be a uh, exciting one to watch. Or it could just crash and burn, in which case it'll also be exciting to watch. But to be determined on that front, I'm going to uh, let you all watch the rest of Pick Band, though, because I have to run to the bathroom. And I will be back in a few short minutes. Okay, we are back. Looking at these comps, emergency sub aside, it feels like DD's got a great comp for stalling. And I actually kind of really like the Lissandra and the Lulu into the picks like a Hecarim. I feel like it allows for a lot of stalling and a lot of, you know, the Hecarim goes in, gets polymorphed, somebody gets ultied, and it just kind of stops a lot of their engage. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see how well Coco can steal and utilize the Shenult. I think the ability to kind of counter and move with those plays is pretty huge. But um, we'll have to see. Based on, I'm not sure, the the cooldown on the Silas ult at level 1 versus the Shenult at level 1 and how long he has to wait to, to take it again. But could be interesting to see if they're both TPing bot, you know, on the same plays. But overall, huh. I feel the problem DD's going to run into is that super late game, Jinx is pretty much their only damage. Like the Lissandra is 
if she blows her entire kit, maybe could one shot the Sivir, but the rest of this team is going to kind of shrug off the Lissandra mid late. And so that kind of puts everything in the Dan Lee basket. But as somebody who is uh, lost to a 21 kill Dan Lee, I know what it's like to have everything in the Dan Lee basket. So plus with the Lulu on top of him, Lissandra, Shana, Mumu stalling, we could see uh, if this uh, if the strategy continues to work out for them. But I feel like SB have probably seen this coming from a mile away. And no, kill that jinx and the rest of the team should surely follow afterwards. Crap, I didn't vote. Do we even have voting on this game? It does not look like there was any voting in place. That is sad. Ooh, I see. BTL2. You hear that, everybody? We need five more followers to get affiliate status so we can do polls. So, if you're here and you haven't followed BTL2, smash that follow button, or whatever streamers say these days. And I'm sorry y'all have to deal with my cringe solo casting. You only have to deal with me for another 15 minutes until my game starts. So... Yeah, Landry, I see you in the chat. You should uh you should watch Misa early game here. See how he pats. It might help you a little bit in our in our in our game coming up. Just a little little hint, little suggestion. Learning experience. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Based on the movements from spawn though, looks like a five point from both teams. Handshaking on a uh Boring, but simple start. I, I personally prefer five-pointing. Level ones don't typically work out too much, but... It's too close to the game to shit-talk, man. This is the perfect time to shit-talk, right before the game starts. So that if Landry slams me, he gets to throw it right back. Ooh, we're going in onto Nikolai. The Amumu's running, he's gonna flash the wall, and he's out. But that is an early flash out of the Amumu. But... Ghost out of Hecarim. So in terms of some trade, you would take the flash on the, uh, the flash is more important, but overall, they're, uh, picking on the emergency sub who has not played a Moomoo in a while. So I would consider that bullying on SB's behalf, but perhaps a little warranted given there was an emergency sub after all, after all picks and bans already had gone through, so... I'm getting first blooded. I'll quote you on that, Landry. I'll quote you on that. But, um... Okay, so red side start for the Hecarim. Amumu is looking like he's gonna have to go leashless, given his late recall. Angela on the victor had gone for a delay and poking him out over the wall, so that was kind of huge. So now that Amumu is going to be off to a very slow start. Hecarim is already going to probably out clear, which means that Hecarim is going to have access to the map a lot sooner. And giving Misa access to the map a lot sooner is generally a scary thing, and more so when he's playing against a jungle sub. So we'll see what's going to happen. We see the Hecarim is looking for potentially an aggressive invade, knowing that the Amumu is set behind. He knows he's not on these raptors, but I don't think his ward spotted him entering through the top side of his red side, so I don't think the Hecarim knows Amumu's there. They're going to meet at the raptor pit. And somebody's at the door. <laughs> Dan's door. Landry's going to Dan's house to figure out how to beat TSC. Last minute coaching visit. Understandable, Landry. I'm ruthless towards Landry because I love him. 
the more I talk shit towards you, the more I respect you, and I appreciate you. Oh my god, if you pick Shaco, <laughs> you've already tilted me. <laughs> Just even threatening me with the Shaco pick. <laughs> this is my fault now. Don't worry, I've already told the team where we have to target ban Chill Wang against AR and we have to ban the Shaco or I will I will lose it before the game even starts. It's not I don't know if it's our weakness, PG, I think it's just my weakness. I wanna see what's gonna happen on this top lane play though. Because we know the Amumu and the Hecarim are gonna meet, but the Amumu just walks away. Amumu gives it up. And that's probably because the the Victor started rotating sooner. So I'm just going to catch wave on the tower. So this is awkward positioning because now the Amumu is going to have to kite all the way from his Krugs to catch his bot wave and start doing anything. The game is frozen. Is that just me or is that everybody? There we go. Ooh, Aunt out of Panting Puma, but I don't think Coco particularly cares. He is a, he is a Silas with Ignite and... Kingslayer, which is going to heal him for a million HP because Silas things. Well, this is going to be interesting seeing how the Amumu can respond with this big shutdown he has early. Because looking at Hecarim, he's got his entire top side into his bot side to clear. This horse is going to be feeding tonight and is going to be happy with all the farm he's getting, whereas the Amumu is going to have to waste all this time walking to his bot side and the only play he's going to have is on bot side, which SB should know, knowing that his top side's down, that the only place he can be is down there. And so his bot lane is under tower right now. They're not under risk of dive. So sadly, I think this Amumu is just going to clear bot side, maybe get his scuttle and have to run back to base and just start off a little bit weaker than the horse. Silas has got to push in top because he knows Amumu's got to be bot side with nothing else to do. So luckily, it seems that SB is in a pretty good position in terms of countering any plays that could come out of DD in the next 30 to 60 seconds, but... I think the play that might need to happen here is Amumu might need to take an early recall, sack these early scuttles, take his back now, while Hecarim is still clearing. Hecarim's going to clear the scuttle, or he's going to look bot, and then he possibly... Oop, there's going to be a collapse in the river, potentially. Nope, Heck just gallops on out. And it looks like this is all there is to see bottom lane. Is Hecarim on a ward? I can't tell. He was on a ward, but DD chose not to pull the trigger. He goes to clear his Krugs, which actually gives Mumu access to the Scuttle, which should help him close some of this gap. Get back in the game, feel good about himself. His bot lane was able to give him that pressure. And his top lane camps are, his top side camps are coming back up. So you can easily rotate out, start grabbing those, closing the gap a little bit. Whereas the Hecarim here is looking bot, but I think he's gonna walk over a ward again. But he's going in. Flash out of Gurg to get away from the, the Alistar knockup. And that's a good sum to take bot side. Gives the Hecarim a very easy gank target in a minute or two when he comes back onto the bot side of the map. But. Gank top side. Coco is in a tough spot. He is Silas, but I don't know if Silas can even live through this one. The flash taunt. And that is a dead Silas into the hands of the Amumu. Good shit out of the Amumu. Was behind, got pushed out of his topside jungle, and man comes back with a vengeance, and first bloods as the emergency sub. If there's something that's going to rouse DD and give them the energy, everything they need to win this one, that's got to be it. Knock up onto the, onto the Lulu, who's going to counter with some poke. It's a good poke onto both sides, but... Given the shields of Lulu, I'm not sure that SB win these trades in the long run.
taking a peek at some other lanes. We see Victor up 10 CS, but a wave is crashing into Lissandra, blowing TP to get back onto the map, whereas Lissandra has her TP, which means she could recall at 6 right now and look to potentially make a play somewhere, teleport in, free somebody in place. But we'll have to see, because now we know Asian Problems are going to be able to shove this wave in, crash it into tower. Is it even going to look to poke and stop the Lissandra's back? So this Lissandra's in a bad place. Going to probably lose a plate, lose a wave. We'll have to see. Likely just going to blow the TP to get back to lane, because it looks like in poking out the Lissandra, Victor was not able to crash the wave super quickly. And so we'll actually only lose out on one melee creep. Second round of buffs are coming back up. We're at seven minutes. Jungler should be taking those. Sadly, it looks like Amumu is on the opposite side of the map. But could be looking to just get a deep ward, warding dragon, possibly looking to ward the raptors or something here. See if he can spot out the Hecarim and give his team a little bit of safety and security. But it's actually just going to steal the raptors with the safety of Lissandra right behind him. Ooh, Coco's going in. Gets the tag onto the Shen, but with the Shen shield, it's tough to get through him. But still an advantageous trade, and given the healing of Shen. Ooh, we're going in on the Alistar. Who's going to get frozen in place? Do they have the damage to get him, though? He still has flash and doesn't even blow it. That is a dead Alistar, a good pick. On behalf of DD, setting themselves up once again. We have seen the Stylus now steal... The Shen ult. So to be determined where he's going to make a play. He's going to crash this huge wave. And so he has the potential to assist somewhere else. He might have to look here at the Sivir. But she's just going to walk under tower. Show Gurg what's up. Throw a few frisbees at him. Amuma gets pushed off the dragon though. He was taking it. But the victor started roaming down. And that scared him off. But a dive onto the Shen. Who blue taunt is now under tower. Taking hits. But they do not have the damage to finish him off. Tower was heated up. And... Neither champions have enough armor to really tank too many shots at this point in time, but they're probably going to look for the redive, and that is a dead Shen. And with the Shen ulti going down onto on the Barrock, the Hecarim gets out alive. They're going to grab some plates. As we kind of noted earlier, that oh, that's a big chunk onto the Amumu. He's got to go and smite a camp or something to heal up, but. Almost a 30 CS lead mid on the Victor. The, the Lissandra has roamed, made some plays, but that 30 CS lead is probably going to start hurting at some point. Victor already scales particularly well, so getting this early CS advantage only bodes, you know, poorly for DD, but we'll have to see. The cast is five, the cast is five seconds or so behind. I think we might have paused whoever is streaming, and so I might be five seconds behind. If I am, I'm sorry, because I can't actually speed it up on my end. That sound magical? I appreciate it. Well, interestingly enough, if Shen missed a massive wave top, he's still up CS, so... I think that shows, surprisingly, that the top lane is going in, in the Shen's favor, or at least somewhat, perhaps because of the early gank out of the Amumu set Coco behind a little bit, but despite apparently missing a huge wave, Shen is up CS, so I might be behind in our game. I expect as much. I'm a team player, Landry. I will be behind because I'm going to be sitting in PJ's backpack protecting him all game. Oh, the flash out of... Oh, this is a dead victor. Yep, that's that's how you do it. Don't go for the bandage toss. Don't go for the 50-50. You flash on his ass and just press the R key. The Lissandra flashes, presses the R key, and that's how you take a victor who was starting to scale a little too fast and shut him down. But it is, what, 10.55? Uh, good night, ladies and gentlemen, because I have to go play my game and kick some Landry ass. But, uh... Enjoy the silent cast, or lack of uh, any cast for the rest of the game. Peace out and good night.
Team's turret has been destroyed. 